Okay, so speaking of, speaking of new therapies, so Larry, you had mentioned, I think appropriately so, that we, what we have over the past two and a half, three years is, are more novel agents, and there are really a lot more agents that have been approved by the FDA for the, over the past two and a half to three years than what was approved, obviously, in the past two decades. And again, as, as all of you had mentioned, this is a very exciting time for all of us who are deeply involved in this particular space. And fortunately for our patients, we have many, many uh, more options. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's talk about some of the newer agents that are currently approved and are about to be studied and waiting for approval. So. Um, Mark, I'm going to start with you. Tell us a little bit about uh, your experience so far with abiraterone, enzalutamide, and cabazitaxel or Jeptana. Well, it's going to be a mouthful. I'll try and keep it short. The, uh, uh, the abiraterone or the Zytiga product now has uh, completely revolutionized our management. Uh, we were early adopters in using it prior to the onset of uh, chemotherapy. Uh, which for which we now are getting routine payment for. So, uh, and this changed the, the whole landscape of the oncology practice because uh, taxotere and chemotherapy was uh, probably one of the early uh, products we used uh, in, when people started to progress. But now with the uh, Zytiga, people are uh, getting a better quality of life. They're getting durable responses and uh, all with just a pill. So it's... Uh, we thought it was going to be sort of like the old ketoconazole problem where people would have a lot of side effects from it, but that really isn't proving to be the case. It's, we're finding it's very well tolerated. So other than access issues and costs sometimes being a barrier, uh, we're uh, typically using Zytiga very early on. Uh, we'll talk about sequencing later, right? But, uh, and uh, Xtandi, of course, is uh, another oral agent. Uh, I, I believe it's about as efficacious as abiraterone, but there's no specific study to prove that. For our audience, can you differentiate the mechanisms of actions of those two drugs for us? Sure. Abiraterone uh, is basically mopping up all residual testosterone, including the testosterone that's inside the cancer cells, which is that's what's unique about abiraterone. Extandi is working to block the receptors more thoroughly so that if there is any residual testosterone inside the cancer cells, that doesn't reach the uh, androgen receptor and stimulate uh, cell growth. So Xtandi is uh, could, well, might even be considered more simple. We don't have to use any prednisone with it. It's uh, four pills a day uh, with or without food. Very convenient and very efficacious. And then the, uh, the chemotherapy you mentioned, the cabazitaxel, is, uh, is sort of, in my view, sort of a new improved taxotere. Taxotere being the go-to uh, product for people with... Uh, uh, we're using it in the setting when people have failed taxotere and have failed these other hor uh, hormonal agents. Okay. Uh, Lenny, you are one of the early adopters and very influential and have published a lot on the, the use of immunotherapy, uh, mostly active immunotherapy. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, CIPT and, and what else might be coming in the future. Sure. Uh, I think really if you look at the history that we've been talking about here the last three to four years, it was really the Cipulusal T approval. It really was the first one out of the gate to bring us into this new era of all the treatments of castrate-resistant prostate cancer. Um, active immunotherapy in prostate cancer is something really that has been worked on for a long time, but no one's really been able to crack the code on exactly how to make that happen. And uh, right now, Cipulusal T is the only FDA-approved product there's also PROSVAC out there, which is a, a Falpox-based, uh, vaccinia-based um, immunotherapy with several uh, components added to it, but that's in very early clinical trials. It is working its way up through the system. But Cipulusal T is an autologous immunotherapy. Uh, it is a first-in-class drug that would been developed specifically from patients' own peripheral circulating mononuclear blood cells. Uh, you perform leukophoresis, it's sent to the laboratory, and then the cells are exposed to a construct that includes prostatic acid phosphatase as well as GMCSF. Those cells are expanded, 
it's returned back to the infusion center and over about 30 minutes to an hour these cells are returned to to the patients uh, and, and the wonderful thing about it is is that this first time uh, this this medication was brought forward in the impact trial it was able to show about a 22 percent reduction in mortality but more importantly about a four point one month extension in overall survival so very exciting times. One wouldn't think that we would have the first autologous immunotherapy uh, for prostate cancer, but in fact, we have that drug now, and it is approved for patients who have minimally symptomatic uh, or asymptomatic uh, metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer. That's great. And then shortly after, on the heels of the approval of CEPT or Provenge in April of 2010, came the next agent, which yeah. is really not a not a prostate cancer drug per se, but it's really a bone targeting agent. I know, Larry, you've, you've done a lot of these, a lot of work on this. You've always been one of my heroes as it comes to uh, bone health management. Thank you. Uh, well, denosumab is really the first in class human, first in class human monoclonal antibody against uh, rank ligand. And so it's a unique uh, compound. Uh, it uh, was developed uh, originally um, uh, looking at uh, the uh, Amgen 103 study where they looked at skeletal related events uh, and they compared that to zoledronic acid and it was found to be superior uh, by uh, about uh, 20 percent. And the thing about denosumab is it's a sub-Q sub injection. It uh, doesn't require renal monitoring and it probably has less uh, acute phase reaction kind of uh, uh, reactions when you compare that to uh, zoledronic acid. So it was first approved for prevention of skeletal related events, as you said, Raul, back in 2010. And then in 2012, it was approved for, uh, the, in, uh, for decreasing bone loss in men uh, who are on ADT therapies. Uh, so it's uh, the denosumab uh, 60 is Prolia, uh, and that's for, uh, uh, for osteoporosis. And uh, Exgeva is denosumab uh, 120, which is used uh, every month uh, for prevention of skeletal related events. And so we have uh, developed a ADT clinic in our uh, practice where any patients, the trigger for getting into that clinic is starting ADT, uh, androgen deprivation therapy. And so what we will do is uh, to promote bone health uh, we, start, we, we start with a DEXA scan, uh, we look at calcium vitamin D levels, we have a, a physician extender at PA that runs our ADT clinic. Uh, our patients uh, go in there, they get evaluated for metabolic syndrome, looking at uh, diabetes, hypertension, uh, as well as uh, bone health. Uh, and so they're followed uh, in this clinic and that's how we manage our, our bone health for men that go on ADT. You know, and I think there's more and more data and more and more uh, acknowledgement by the urology community, especially because we've induced uh, bone, metabolic, bone and metabolic issues uh, by the institution of LHRH therapy. And I think finally now we've got some very effective therapy. So, 